What you're doing with personal protective equipment is you're creating a barrier between the environment where the chemical exists and contact uh, with the human body, whether you're breathing it in or you're getting it on the skin or it's getting into the eyes. So we have some personal protective equipment that's fairly effective at doing that. Uh, the problem is, of course, you know, let's say during the summer months, uh, the temperature may soar to uh, 95, 100 degrees. Uh, it may be quite still out there. Uh, when people have a lot of personal protective equipment on, they're uh, exposed to an inordinate amount of heat. And so you create a new risk that has really very little to do with the direct impact of the chemical itself, but could be very significant and be actually even more risky than exposure to the chemical itself. And that is from heat stress where you know people can get into serious trouble. So um, that's why it's important to uh, look at the, 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 the benefits of uh, minimizing exposure and the methods used to minimize exposure and weigh them in the balance with the risks that could be created uh, by trying to do that. So uh, to, to, again, to answer the question, does it, does it get rid of the, the risk of exposure to the chemical? It certainly minimizes it by creating that barrier, but it has the potential to create other risk. And that's particularly true of something like a respirator, for example, and that's why I say uh, respirators are certainly a very effective tool that could be used, but to answer the question, you know, should everybody uh, use a sophisticated respirator or begin putting on uh, what we call self-contained breathing apparatuses, that could be problematic because of the other risks that are created.